Good evening. I'm Muna Golubek. In many of the Romantic Hours broadcasts, you've heard me speak of Georges Sand, the great love of Frédéric Chopin. Tonight, reflections upon the early love life of the great composer. As a young man, Chopin noticed a young singer, Henrietta Sontag. He wrote of her, She isn't beautiful, but charming. Her voice, without much range, is extremely polished. From the orchestra pit, it seems that her breath is perfumed by the freshest caress, and it is like a delicious caress. But she rarely moves one to tears. However, she bewitches everyone. What pleasure I had meeting her close up in her room on a sofa. But we went no further. Although it seemed Chopin would never love anyone, he was a lover of love. He kept it at a safe distance. Instead, he poured love not into any person, but into his music. He would ask himself, How should I drive out the thoughts that ruin my life if I didn't feel such delight in cultivating them? Before he left Warsaw, Chopin fell in love with Kostancia Glazkowska. It is a mystery whether or not he informed her of this. At one time, she gave him a glance as he was coming out of a church, and he was completely smitten. In 1829, Chopin wrote to his friend Titus, Perhaps to my misfortune, I have met my ideal and have served her faithfully for six months without speaking to her about my feelings. I dream about it. Under her inspiration, the adagio of my concerto in F minor was born. At the same time, Chopin was quite fond of another woman. As he wrote in another letter, I'll pay a visit to Mademoiselle de Moriolt. She is the one, as you know, to whom I have declared my love. I have often made people think that she was the cause of my melancholy. The cloak of hidden feelings must be respected. I never thought that I could conceal anything on this point. If you imagine, like so many others, that a love affair is holding me back, get that idea out of your head. Rest assured that I can stay in control of myself any time. Chopin went on to He's seek involved. his fortune in the world. And late one night, in 1831, while in the city of Stuttgart, he wrote, A corpse is as pale as me. It is as cold as I am now to everything. A corpse has ceased to live, and I too have lived my fill. My fill. Has a corpse really had its fill of life? Was Costanzia pretending that she loved me? It's a puzzle. Yes, no, yes, no. Does she love me? Does she really love me? Let her do as she likes. I have been in the grips of a dry sadness for so long, it's been impossible for me to cry for such a long time. What is this feeling? While Chopin was in Stuttgart, the Russian armies were attacking his beloved city of Warsaw. In his notebook, he wrote, Where is Costantia? Perhaps she's in the hands of the Moscovites. A Moscovite grabbing her, strangling her, murdering, killing her. Oh, my beloved, I am here alone. Come to me. I'll wipe away your tears. I'll heal the wounds of the present by calling to mind the past. Some years later, after Chopin had moved to Paris, he met Georges Sand, whom he did not at first admire. Gradually, an affection grew, but it was probably more intense in the mind of Sand. She wrote about Chopin to a friend, saying, he certainly would have shrunk from my first kiss if he had known that I was, in a way, married. We did not deceive each other. We gave ourselves to the wind which was blowing, 
and which carried us both off to another land for a few moments. But we nevertheless had to return to earth after this celestial blaze and empyrean flight. Jorsan had very precise feelings about how much lovers should be together and apart. She continued in her letter, I am so accustomed to loving exclusively the one who loves me, so little giving to catching fire, so used to living with me without thinking of myself as a woman, that truly I was a bit confused and in consternation at the effect that Chopin had had on me. It would be painful for me to see this angel suffer. I saw clearly that human passion was making great strides in him and that it was time to part. As Jorsan wrote again to Albert Grismala, As for Chopin, he will come to my estate if he likes. If he doesn't want to come, leave him to his own devices. He is afraid of the world. I don't know what. In people I cherish, I respect what I do not understand. If you do not have the solutions to the questions, try to get it out of Chopin. Search his soul. I must know what is going on in there.